That was an amazing analysis. Very detailed, very informative. Thank you. Um, I f also feel a lot of empathy for the families that will bear the brunt of a project like this um, for the greater good. Um, and so I say that, uh, so I can say this, which is uh, we would like to know at Preservation Action Council um, what the effect of this rail alignment strategy is on the Deardon, the historic Deardon station. Um, does it move into downtown west? Does it stay in place? Does it uh, get uh, moved someplace else? It'd be interesting to know um, if you can give us a status on that. Um, on a personal note, um, I just, I haven't seen a plan yet that's gonna show how we connect this to the airport. And given that we poured a billion dollars onto that airport, it seems like we ought to have some method that uh, isn't uh, traditional surface transportation. And um, just having spent some time in Paris recently and Washington DC and other cities that have figured out how to dig and to keep the water out, it just seems like that that ought to be an option that we at least look at as an alternative. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Hold on to your hat because I think we'll come up with some interesting ideas for an airport connector in the next few months, right, Jessica? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, any um, staff want to respond to any of the questions that were raised? I know some of those questions might take some time to go do a little digging, but sure. One one of the um, one of Larry's questions um, is is a fact that made it into the memo, but not into that presentation, despite its length. Um, so apologies for that omission. But on page nine of the memo, uh, we did estimate the grade equivalent that those freight trains would need to run at, which is between 1.4 and 1.5 percent, which is about 50 percent greater than the grade that they are um, willing to. And I have other questions from Lori, from Larry, but um, have not gotten all the way through all of them. So. And Mira, I might add too that. Um, the question of a tunnel came up on a, on a, from a number of speakers, and as you and maybe other members of the council may recall, as we worked through this with high-speed rail for a number of years, the city undertook an independent evaluation to kind of look at the feasibility of that. We hired Exeltech, uh, a tunnel design firm, an expert firm on that, uh, to independently assess it and we came to the conclusion that process of trying to put that size of a station underground in those soils, given what we're trying to do with the development of the Deeridon station area, it really was not feasible. And so that, we came to that kind of independent conclusion. We spent city investment on figuring that out. Um, we certainly coordinated with the other agencies, but that's a conclusion that we came to as a city. We didn't think it was kind of in the best interests of uh, that kind of the, from a feasibility, constructability standpoint, from a safety standpoint, and then our kind of development aims in that area and the long-term impacts to the kind of the surface area of Deeridon would have been too significant, we thought. So we did do that work as well a number of years back. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for reminding us. Okay, and, and just a nod on the historic depot question, because we've been getting that quite a bit in our outreach. Um, the the Deardon concept layout at this point does contemplate affecting the depot. We haven't yet figured out how we're going to deal with that. Um, I often say when we're out in the public, this process of planning will raise more questions than it answers. So it's on our to-do list in the next phase to sort out how we will mitigate or deal with the depot, but we recognize how important it is in San Jose and that it needs to be treated appropriately. Also, there are processes in place that protect it. It's on the National Historic Land, it's a National Historic Landmark. So there's, again, that regulatory environment that we live in on it. There's also ideas that we will be brainstorming on kind of how to incorporate it or deal with it in the station planning in the next phase. And then I think more on the airport connector. Yeah, one, one last thing on the historic depot, just to clarify in case it's, it isn't clear. Somewhat analogous to the existing corridor situation, what we have is uh, residential um, properties just to the west of the existing track line. And so when we're talking about the rail modernization within the station, even though it is um, you know, difficult to contemplate moving and relocating and reusing the historic depot, our, our sense is that that is um, 
the right direction to push rather than affecting the homes um, to the to the west. So that's kind of part of the why. It's, it's certainly not a flippant um, decision. And then the airport connector was asked about, and um, we're trying to play uh, a, a bit of a, a uh, we're on a learning curve to understand what is possible with the airport connector. Uh, the city released a request for interest in the fall, and we received 23 uh, responses. Um, and so we have a, a, a consultant doing a small bit of work to help us sift through those responses and, and bring up the, the best options. And each of those options have different process implications, different time implications, different technologies. So what we're trying to get is a lot of diversity of uh, solutions, and we've certainly gotten that. So please stay tuned on, on that one, but we agree. Uh, and then I'm gonna ask Sebastian to address some of the issues of uh, rail planning, service planning, and future proofing, because um, Caltrain has been doing an extremely uh, significant amount of work on this. Before we go to Sebastian, Jessica, when do you expect we're gonna surface the RFI, uh, at least some aspect of the findings? Um, so we have um, probably another, probably in late, Late February, early March okay. is my best guess. Great. Okay. Look forward to it. Sebastian, I'm sorry. Sure. 